Good afternoon, grade 11. Would you agree with me that grade 11 is a very difficult year? What do I hear? A loud yes. But don't worry, we are here to assist you. We are here to help you. And specifically, we think that we are going to help you with chemistry today. And lastly, we would like you and your teachers to send in answers and do the three exercises that we have for you today. But two reminders. Let's look at my screen quickly. We want, we want you to know at the end of the day one, what is a redox reaction? And then number two, we're going to ask you, what are some of the important words, language words, chemistry words, concepts that you have to know? Three, we will ask you, do you know what oxidation numbers are? And lastly, we're going to ask you, do you know how to write oxidation reactions? You got that? So what we're going to ask you, what is a redox reaction? Two, use this language in chemistry because that's exactly what chemistry is, a language. Number three, we will ask you a big word, oxidation numbers. And lastly, we're going to ask you to write. So have your pen, your paper, your brain ready for our action. Two reminders, however, that you have to contact us in the studio. And here is our contact details. Number one. There's a website, ite.sun.az.za, that is the Stellenbosch University. And then, of course, there's our WhatsApp number, which you know very well. And then there is our SMS line. And while you're there, don't forget to visit us on the Telematic School Project website and click like on Facebook for you. Now, I would like you to send in answers. I would like you to participate if you can't, that you shout out answers, that you just perform, just get involved. That's the quickest way to learn. Because I haven't seen anybody logging in yet, so I'm hoping that you will do so later on. So what have you learned in grade 10 about chemical reactions? Let me remind you. Here we go. You had, during your third term last year, you had types of chemical reactions. And the first set of chemical reactions that you learned about was the acid-base chemical reaction. And you had to learn that a hydrogen ion was moved from an acid to a base. And in grade 11, either this year or next year, you will have to do a titration where you run a base into an acid or an acid into a base, depending. But basically, you learned an acid plus a base that will give you a salt plus water. Number two, you also learned uh, in during the course of that last year that there are other kinds of reactions called precipitation reactions where a solid in this case was formed and we call a solid just a smart word for it an insoluble product then you also had a different kind of reaction and I see that my slide has gone precisely out of control quickly let me just speak to you and then quickly just put it back on to where it should be. But nothing that matters is important that you know the different type of reactions because if you do know the different type of reactions, then you know how to approach it. And that's exactly what we're going to do this afternoon here for you. But I think I'm almost ready for you. Just one minute more and then we can see what do we have on the screen? Here we go again. Number one, we say that the first type of chemical reaction we have was an acid-base one. And we normally say the acid gives us a proton, a proton donor. A proton is just another word for hydrogen, a positive hydrogen ion. And we find the acid donates that proton to the base. The next one we have is we have a precipitation reaction. And that means that we have a solid forming between two chemicals, chemical one, chemical two, and when they react together, we get the precipitation. Number three that we have is we have gas forming ones. Uh, for instance, if you drink, uh, drink Enos, you find that there's a gas forming and as soon as the one chemical lands in the other one. But today's one, which is very important, is the one up here. That is, we are learning about 
an oxidation reduction reaction. That means an electron is going to be moved from the oxidation of reaction to the reduction of reaction. All right, grade levens. Let me just hear from you. Do you think you remember those four ones quickly that you learned in grade tens? Acid base, all right, that's the first one. The second one was starts with a P, a precipitation one, correct. Then we had one where it fizzes, it gives us a gas. It's a gas forming reaction. And the last one was a redox reaction or an oxidation reduction reaction. Now you might ask, so what is this redox or oxidation reduction reaction? Let's give a definition for it, and thereafter we're going to explain it to you slowly so that you get it once and for all. Do you know why? Because you're going to need it towards the end of the year when you do revision or when you have to write your assessment or your final exams, and you're going to need it again in grade 12 for three weeks long when you're going to do two important topics on redox reactions. So let's get this clear today and understand it very well. What we were talking about, oh yes, the different kind of reactions. Let's look once more time at the screen. We said acid base, precipitation, gas forming, and oxidation reduction one. So let me quickly tell you, do you see that diagram there? Do you see that picture there? That picture looks like well, these are some nuts, and it is rusted, because rust is nothing else but an oxidation reaction. That's right. So what is a redox reaction? It's an abbreviated term for a reduction oxidation reaction. Can you see there? There's a reduction. There it is. And there's oxidation. So this is an abbreviation for reduction oxidation reactions. Now the question is, of course, is someone going to send me an answer what they think a redox reaction is? No? Don't know? I haven't seen any names coming through. I haven't been watching carefully, but no one has seen. Please log in and send us an answer. So let me explain to you then while I'm waiting for you to log in. So what is a redox reaction? Number one, there's an example of iron plus oxygen. So what happens here is that the iron, that's the iron atom there, or the iron elements on that side, that, that iron then gives us a, an electron, and the electron is transferred. That's right. The electron is transferred from the iron to the oxygen. And when the iron becomes positive because it loses electrons, the oxygen becomes negative because it gains electrons, and then we find the two of them positive and negative attract, and we have iron oxide. So what is a redox reaction? Nothing else but a reaction where electrons are transferred from one atom or group of atoms to another atom, from one atom to another atom. Did you hear that? What is, what is transferred? Transfer means to take from one place to another place. So what is transferred in a redox reaction? Correct, those are electrons. Number two, where are they transferred? Where are they taken to? They're taken from one atom or group, like ions, to another one. Okay, so now today's action will be all about watching the electrons transferred. By the way, in grade 8, you've done electrolysis. And in grade 12, you're going to do electrolysis again. And you are also doing in grade 12 what we call a galvanic cell. But today, I'm just going to show you the diagram you should have seen somewhere along the way and show you how clever you as a science student can be. Let's look at the screen for that picture, first of all. So there we have a diagram. And here we have a cell, or as we would call it a battery. And this battery has some electrons in it. And it will send the electrons down here and give it to one chemical. And the chemical will come out in solution. I'll explain now now. And on this side, I have a positive side. 
and the yeah, electrons will be, electrons, negative charges there, will be pulled up here and then will be taken over to that side. That is the basic idea of how smart chemistry students are. They can actually use portable energy, battery itself, and force electrons to move around. So because we know that the redox reaction is the transfer of electrons. By the way, I've got such a setup here, and I want us to look at it from the top quickly, so that we can just clearly see here is the battery, and so therefore electrons from this side inside will be drawn up, and the electrons will move through through the through the cell through the battery, and then to the other chemical here. And today I have in here I have copper chloride, copper chloride in here. And guess what happened? The copper chloride, by sending electrons to the copper, the copper actually came out and settled here. Can you see from a distance? Yes, you can. I think you can see that. You can see there is copper sitting. So I'm actually making copper here today and chlorine gas. Those two I'm making from that salt that is in there. Now, isn't that a smart idea to know redox reactions that I can actually make chlorine gas? I can make copper, I can make all the chemicals that I have in my laboratory, and so forth and so forth. I can get lots of chemical reactions, and that's why you have to know your redox reactions. Keyword, transfer of electrons. Now the question is, of course, what happens now once we know that we have a transfer of electrons? Maybe we should just go then and explain very carefully to you about how this actually happens. Because here I've drawn for you a Boer diagram, since grade 10 you know this, of the magnesium atom. It is atom number 12 on the periodic table. It has 2 and then 10, no, 2 and 8, and that gives me 10, 11, 12 electrons. Those are called the valence electrons, you would remember. So if I make a summary of what happens in the magnesium atom, I can write the following. I can say magnesium has 12 protons, that we all know by now, 12 protons, I write it as plus 12. It has 12 electrons, there we can see blue and orange, and that's negative 12 because electrons are negatively charged. And so the total charge is zero on the magnesium atom. Well, that's nice. But we also know that magnesium is in group number two because it has two valence electrons. Got that? So therefore, if magnesium was going to react with something else, it would rather give off these two electrons than gain another six electrons. Ah, short story. Magnesium, like all metals, they tend to lose electrons. Those on the left-hand side of the periodic table tend to lose electrons. So let's assume that magnesium today is going to lose two electrons. So let's look at the screen and see what happens. So we say magnesium will lose two electrons. So later, the before picture is 12 electrons, 12 protons. If the magnesium atom loses two valence electrons, then we have 12 protons here in the nucleus, and 10 electrons, so there I made my sums, my arithmetic, plus 12 for protons, negative 10. Why? Because those two have gone lost to another atom, remember, is going to be transferred. Okay, then I see magnesium now is sitting with a shortage of two electrons, and we say there are more protons than electrons, in fact, two more protons, and we write it as 2 plus or plus 2. Now, isn't that a smart way of writing it? So, do you think you got that? First, it was a neutral atom. Then it has lost two electrons because only electrons can move. Protons can't move. They are held in the nucleus. The electrons are wide on the outside, so they can get lost. They come in contact first with the other atoms, so other atoms can steal two electrons from them. So what do we find? That magnesium now becomes 2 plus positively charged. So what does Mg2 plus mean? 
it simply means that magnesium, which was an atom before, is now an ion. Let's explain again on the screen that we have. We say that magnesium, the atom, is neutral, but magnesium, the ion, is a positively charged one. So when I use the word ion, I mean an atom that has lost electrons and become an ion. That means it has got two plus in this case. So how do we write this? Well, let's look. I said magnesium neutral. Magnesium neutral, look at there. Magnesium neutral. Now, we don't normally write that when we talk about neutral ones because all freestanding, all neutral elements or atoms, we normally don't write the zero in. But I've done it today just to show you that that means it's charged up there. There's the charge. So what do you expect the one on the right to have? A plus two, of course. So I can write that. That becomes, that's right, during a reaction. And what do I get? I get two electrons come free. It's those two electrons over there, that one and that one comes free. So maybe I might just highlight that quickly. There they are. They are free now. Where are they going to? They're going to be transferred to another atom or group of atoms. And then I write, so what does magnesium look like afterwards? Mg2+. plus. So I can now ni nicely highlight this for you and say, please remember that I write it as follows. I say this one with all its electrons is just magnesium. Something happens, a reaction happens, and then it has lost two electrons, and I write the two lost electrons as two plus because there are more protons now. So I indicate that I had 12 at the beginning, but now I have 10, and I write it as two electrons. I write those two things, I don't want to make dots all the time, as two electrons. Is everybody happy? You think that you have got that very clear. Are you sure you, you know what I've written there in just now? Yes. So let's look at it one more time, just to make sure we know what's going on, and then we're going to ask you a question after this. Let's look quickly at the screen again. So we say we know that we have magnesium, like in this case, it loses two electrons. I put it in square brackets to know this is not the magnesium atom. This is now an ion, and the two plus indicates that I've lost two electrons since I was there. So this is the before, and this is the after picture. Now, learners, so it's important that you know what happens here. And the term that we use, we say there was a change in the charge of the atom. The atom was neutral before, then it lost two electrons, so they were more positive, and now it's got a positive charge. So there was a change in the charge. Okay, question for the smart ones out there. What will now happen to those two electrons that have gone lost? Oh, they can't disappear. In the universe, all matter is conserved. We know that already. We know that since grade 10, they learn you a balanced equation. In other words, what you have on the left-hand side must appear on the product side. Not so. So I must give account of those electrons because, after all, I said that redox reactions are transfer from one place to another, from one atom to another, from one ion to another ion. That's right. So I just can't lose them. I've got to account for them. So let's find out what that story is about. Let's quickly have a look. So let me give you a more difficult diagram to look at now. There we have it. So let's see. There is magnesium. It has lost electrons. And we call that idea oxidation of magnesium. Lost of electrons. OK, it's called oxidation. We're coming back to that now. But in this case, we've chosen magnesium to give one electron to a chlorine atom and another electron to another chlorine atom. And if I look at chlorine later, I see, OK, there is the given electron, and there's the given electron, which chlorine didn't have, because chlorine only had one there, but now it has two there. It had one there, but now it has two there. So where did that one and one come from? from the magnesium, and magnesium is poor, is electron poor now. That means there was a movement of the electrons from one to the other one. So how do we write that? Let's check once again. We say that the magnesium atom has lost two electrons, 
to form magnesium ion. So what's an ion? It's an atom that has lost or gained electrons. Magnesium has been oxidized. Okay. Why? Because it's lost two electrons. Okay. Did you get that the first time around? That the moment something loses an electron, we say it is oxidation taking place. So magnesium has lost electrons. So that process, those steps of gripping the electrons loose and transferring it someone else to somewhere else is called oxidation. So the loser has been oxidized. Now, watch for the next big word, next big concept that comes up. Look at my screen again. It says now that the magnesium atom, this one here, is reducing agent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Reducing agent? Oxidation, reduction. Okay. So the atom that loses the electrons has been oxidized. And then we call that atom the reducing agent. Whoa. Aren't you a bit puzzled? Why would we use such a strange word for reducing agent? We'll explain that just now to you. But just uh, let's quickly look what is a reducing agent. Because now you've got to remember oxidation and the atom that is oxidized is called a reducing agent because it does something to another atom. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you're going to find out. Let's look quickly what's the definition of a reducing agent. The definition of a reducing agent is the following. It is that it's a substance that is oxidized. Let's just quickly revise what is on the screen now. So a reducing agent, I can describe a substance that is oxidized. <clears throat> now, let us see what we have so far, just to summarize this. Oxidation is the loss of electrons that we know already. Magnesium loses electrons, therefore it's called oxidation. Number two, we write this as one half of the story. Why? Because this one is the loser. We must still describe the one that accepts the electrons. We must still describe the one that wins the electrons. How many electrons does magnesium have to give away? Oh, yes, it can give away two electrons. Is magnesium, this one, oxidized or reduced? No, the answer is oxidation because oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons. So we can say two things about magnesium. Oxidized, magnesium is oxidized. Two, magnesium is going to give someone else the electrons. And therefore, magnesium is also known as the reducing agent. What a story. What a story. But maybe we need to look at the other atom or atoms or groups of atoms that's going to receive the electrons and see where this idea of reducing agent comes from. Maybe we should look at the screen again one time. Okay, here we go. We have our story again. Magnesium gives the electrons. Chlorine takes it. But maybe we must just take magnesium out of the picture for a moment so we can just talk about chlorine for now. Okay, there we start the story already very quickly. We say reduction is the gain of electrons. And now the question, of course, is who is gaining the electrons? What shall I do now? Okay, let me just take magnesium out of the picture quickly and talk about chlorine. So chlorine had, mm, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 electrons, group 17. That's dead right. So therefore, chlorine would like another one just to fill up, and of course, magnesium can provide the one. But I, magnesium gives off two, so I need another chlorine. Okay, so that's why I have Cl2. So now, that means chlorine is reduced. But who's clo causing chlorine to be reduced? It was magnesium who is reducing agent will 
cause chlorine to be reduced by giving chlorine one electron and another electron. Okay, so what do we have to remember? Reduction is the gain of electrons. So chlorine is reduced. Chlorine is gaining electrons from which one in this case? From magnesium. Okay, before I continue my story, I just have two announcements here. The one is a new two new messages who came through. And what? The one says that we are experiencing a poor picture quality, but I see no name to it. I will try to open it up there quickly and see. No, it doesn't tell me. Oh, yes. We are experiencing a poor picture quality and sound in Neisner Combined School. Okay, I see. In Oh, in the Eastern Cape. Oh, Kuyasa Combined School. My apologies, Kuyasa Combined School in the Eastern Cape. The poor, I'm sure the technicians will have a look at it now that the message has come to. But welcome to you. That's a Kuyasa Combined School out in the Eastern Cape. Please send in some answers even if you can't get the picture so well, you can still respond to my voice. Okay, where were we now? Not in the Eastern Cape, we were in the Western Cape. And that is that chlorine is reduced. So that means that if we say that chlorine molecule has been reduced, that means the Cl2 molecule, which is this combination here, has gained two electrons from magnesium, I might add, to form two chloride ions. Chloride, why? Because each one is negative now, because negative means neg I've got more electrons now than I had before. Electrons than I had before. And chlorine is the oxidizing agent. Okay, I now get it. The oxidizing agent causes magnesium to be oxidized. And magnesium is the reducing agent because it causes chlorine to be reduced. Now it all makes sense to me. Don't you agree? So the one that is oxidized, he loses the electrons to give it someone else to be reduced, and therefore the one substance like magnesium, which is oxidized, is called the reducing agent. What a smart way of putting out all these things. We're going to, at the end, summarize all of these again for you again. So what's the definition of an oxidizing agent? Let us quickly see. We can say that an oxidizing agent is a substance that is reduced. But wait a minute. I can't go draw all these diagrams and write all these words all the time. So I use symbols in chemistry. Chlorine molecule, Cl2, Cl and a Cl, and they combine together. They share electrons, so therefore they are molecule. The chlorine molecule gets two electrons from magnesium and then becomes two separate chloride ions. Chloride, I-D-E, means there is a charge there onto it. Minus one, minus one for this one in group 17. That is what is happening here. Okay, so now I think we've now explained that slowly, surely, so you should get a good idea. Now, one more thing, how does one remember these things? But don't worry, we've got study tips for you. Maybe we should look at the screen quickly to find that out. So I call that the reduction of reaction, and then I've got my study tips. What are the study hints we have? One, that I can remember that the abbreviation LEO, Leo, is loss of electrons is called oxidation or GER or GER is the gain of electrons is called reduction. That is what it's called. And now we have a second study hint to you, or tip for you. Here we go. We write it down for you, and we say, if you remember this uh, platform on C, which is called an oil rig, you will remember oxidation is the loss of electrons, and reduction is the gain of electrons just like chlorine did. So who was losing? Magnesium. So magnesium was oxidized. Magnesium was a reduction or reducing agent because it was the agent who was going to reduce the other one, which was chlorine. And reduction is the gain of electrons, 
and it is called the oxidizing agent because it causes the other partner to lose the electrons to hand over the electrons. Wow, what a story and a half. There's a lot of things for you to remember, not so. Oxidation, reduction, reducing agent, oxidizing agent. Lots of things to remember. But then you are smart. You are grade 12, in grade, uh, so almost grade 12. And then in a year and a half time, you'll be sitting at university already. So that means that by now your brain is expanding and you're just getting the stuff. Well, how do you say? You're on top of everything. But now before we go there, maybe I'll just show you a table that the grade 12s use where they can clearly see these reactions written as half reactions. Just look at the screen again, and you'll see what I have to show you. Here we go. So if we look at this table, and this table is called a table with half reactions. It's called the standard reduction potential. In other words, we have only reduction addition of electrons. And if you look at magnesium here, you'll see it's magnesium 2 plus gets two electrons and becomes magnesium. But you're going to say, no, that's wrong. Now remember, this table is written as reductions. You'll learn more about this in grade 12. So all I've got to tell you now that that magnesium there is a strong reducing agent. If I compare it to chlorine, which I'll show you now in the next slide, if I compare magnesium to chlorine, it's a strong reducing agent because this arrow tells me reducing agents become stronger, reducing agents become stronger this way up. And magnesium, because chlorine is on the other half of the table, chlorine is, magnesium is a stronger reducing agent. Why? Because it likes to lose electrons. But then you might as well argue, so why do I write it that way? No, when you get to grade 12, they're going to teach you that you must reverse the reaction. What? Let us just quickly have a look of what that means. So we take that that reaction there, and we reverse it just like you've learned it today. Just watch carefully. Ah, so I reverse the reaction. Magnesium becomes M2+. plus. Now I've written oxidation here. And this table here that I see here, the green table, is not oxidation. It's reduction, but I can change it to oxidation by writing it that way around. Now, isn't that smart? That is what chemistry learners do. Now, for the next step. What happens to the chlorine on the same table? And where do I get this table from? Just after this, I'll show you the table quickly. But let's just look at the chlorine. OK, so there's my bottom half of the table, which I'll show you now. And then if I look carefully and I read here, oxidizing agents or ac oxidizing ability, I go down the line, and voila, there I see chlorine. Chlorine molecule plus two electrons give me two chloride ions. So I don't always have to write it up myself. I can get it. So what can I say about the chlorine? If I compare chlorine to magnesium, chlorine is the stronger oxidizing agent on table 4B. It is the one at the bottom of the table. What table am I referring to? You might be asking. We are talking about two tables that you normally get in your grade 12 assessment or examinations and class tests, but sometimes you also get it in grade 11. If I can zoom in my whiteboard, you will see that there is such a table. There is such a table. It has a heading, as you can see there. It says table 4B, standard reduction potential, and that is why I get plus electrons, plus electrons. So what is this table about? Nothing else. This table is nothing else but scientists have worked out how many electrons something is going to grab and get from other atoms. So that is what that table is about. And I think you must ask your teacher to show you that table, and then you can look at chlorine and magnesium again just to find out what really is happening there. Oh, I've been talking a lot today. So how about you doing an example with me quickly or for me? You have the exercise in front of you. I'm sure you have. So let's look at an example very quickly. I'll show it on screen first, and then we'll work at it together. But before I get there, here's something interesting for you to remember from grade 10. In grade 10, we know that you had to learn your valency table from your periodic table. You learned the periodic table the, for the first time, 
and you have to learn the valencies. But let me just explain what I mean. So there's hydrogen, there's lithium, there's sodium and beryllium, magnesium and so forth, and you learned that this was group one, that was group two, and group one always loses one electron, and then becomes positively one charge, and group two loses two electrons and so forth. Group three, or 13 as you call them these days, lose three electrons, becomes plus three. But then some of them also become negative on that side. We know that these elements, yin, yon, argon, and helium, they are inert, they don't like to react. But we know that group 17, we know that group likes to get one electron, and therefore one negative electron we write as negative one. So group 17 is negative one, and group 16 is negative two because they like to grab two electrons like oxygen and so forth. I'll tell you more about that later on. But for now, what is it that you have to know to answer the following question? Down here quickly, let me just look down here. You have to know that group one loses one electron, group two like to lose two electrons, group number three like to use three electrons, group 17 uh, gain one electron, becomes negative one, group 18 like to gain two electrons. They like to gain, so mostly this side is reduction and this side is oxidation, also oxidation in the transition metals. So those things you know already, so I don't think that you have a problem with that, would you now? So let's look at what was the uh, exercise you had to do. There was the activity, and they ask you in the first one, if you have potassium, two potassium atoms, let me just make sure that you see where I'm reading, two potassium atoms, and you add it to a bromine molecule, and it gives you two potassium bromide ionic compound, two moles of them. So let's go again. Two moles of potassium plus one mole of bromine atoms, and then we find we get two moles of potassium bromide. That is metal plus non-metal, so that's an ionic, ionic, ionic bond. So now I know potassium is in group one. I showed you that earlier. So it has a plus one, and bromine is in group 17 under chlorine, and it's a negative one charge if it steals electrons. Let me just go slowly again. So potassium has one electron, but there's two. That means potassium can give off two electrons. But there are two bromines to accept it. The potassium is going to become plus by losing one electron. And the bromine is going to become negative by taking the electron. OK, let me just do it differently for you on the board in front of me. Let's just go down to the board in front of me. So there's potassium. It is standing there all by itself like a normal atom, and its charge is zero. So I'll write the zero here below. Its charge is zero. I add that to a bromine molecule. I see no charge, so that is bromine is a freestanding free molecule, so the charge is zero, so I say the charge is zero. Oh, wow, very nice, everything works out right. And if I look again, I see here is potassium, bromide, metal, non-metal. That means transfer of electrons took place. Okay. And the potassium is in group one, so how many electrons will potassium lose? It will lose one electron. So it will write in plus one. So I can say the charge of potassium is plus one. I'm only talking about potassium. I'm not talking about how many yet. I'm just talking about potassium and bromine like to grab electrons and bromine will grab one electron. Okay, so bromine will be minus one. You got that. So now what can I say about this? I can say, let's look at the before and after picture. If I look at potassium before, I can see that potassium's charge has changed. Hey? Potassium's charge has changed from zero to one. But potassium has lost electrons. Okay, what do you get that? It has lost electrons. And what do we call the loss of electrons? Of course, you are smart. We call that oxidation. That is what we call it. The loss of electrons is called oxidation. 
So that means potassium was oxidized. And potassium is a reducing agent because it is going to cause bromine to be reduced. So now let me therefore see what happened to bromine. Bromine, if I look at bromine before, zero, and then later bromine was minus one. So bromine has gained electrons. And if I say bromine has gained electrons, another word for gaining electrons is reduction. I'm just going to abbreviate it, reduction. That is what it is. Okay, so that means that this was a redox reaction because there's the re at the top. There is the re red at the top. And here is the ox at the bottom. So this was a redox reaction. Okay, so this was a redox reaction. Look how I worked it out by means of the charges. Now, do you think you got that? How you had to think? So therefore, if I look at the screen, I can say the following, that what happened here with number 1.1.1, there was a change in the charge of the atoms from naught to naught to minus 1 or to plus 1. I see the plus 1 is omitted there. So that was z naught to plus 1. That was from naught to minus 1. So there was a change in the charge of the atoms and therefore, it is a redox reaction. Okay, let's then do the second one and see whether we can do a similar trick. Number one, let us look at sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, you know hydroxide is minus one and sodium is plus one. You know that sodium is in group one, hydroxide you have to learn in grade 10 already is negative one. So this is plus one for sodium. Hydroxide, negative one. Hydrogen chloride, or hydrochloric acid, if you need to say. Chlorine, we know, is negative one. Therefore, that one will have to be plus one. Now, why? Because together, they are neutral, and they make up zero. So one plus one, one plus minus one gives me a zero. The same year, plus one in negative one gives me a zero because they are neutral. There's no charge written on them. Chlorine, I know, becomes from group 17, negative one. And sodium, I know, is in group one, so it will be plus one. So hold it. And this one here, I can rewrite as HOH. And what is hydrogen always? Plus one in group one, and OH is negative one. Hey, eh? what's happening here now? Sodium was plus one. Sodium is still plus one after the action. Hydrogen was plus one. Hydrogen still stays plus one. Hydroxide is negative one. Hydroxide is negative one. Wait, what is going on? Chlorine is negative one before the action, and after the action, still negative one. Okay, so I get it. There was no change in the charges, and therefore this was not a redox reaction. Smarter. Let's quickly see how that happened. Sodium hydroxide, if you don't know, that is a base. And hydrochloric acid is an acid. That means it's an acid and a base and not a redox reaction. Now, that is one of the smartest things that I have ever seen. But okay, let's look at my screen again. Therefore, I say there was no charge, as there was no change in the charge of the atoms, and therefore it is a, it's not a redox reaction but is an atom or is an acid and a base reaction. Okay, I'll leave the next two for you to do. Now, let us go on to the next idea. And the next idea is to look at one specific one and try to write half reactions. And I'm going to move a little bit faster because I think you get the proper ideas by now. Let us look at our screens and see what comes up next. 
There is activity number two. And activity number two says that you must consider the following redox reaction. In other words, we tell you that it is a redox reaction. Sodium plus chlorine gives us sodium chloride. Write down the balanced chemical equation for the oxidation of reaction. But I'm gonna move fast now, but you need to stay with me. Can we look at our board again? Here we go. Sodium, what's the charge there? Zero. Okay, what's the charge here? Zero, because there's nothing shown. But this is the only compound of plus and negative. Plus one, group one, group 17, minus one. We've done that over and over. So what can I say now? Sodium is zero to plus means it's lost the electron. So therefore, I must write sodium before, and then sodium changes and become sodium ion. Can you see? From here to there, sodium is lost. That positive tells me too, much, too many protons, lost electrons. How many electrons is this one lost? That is lost one electron. Okay, so how do I do it now? I'm going to just balance it because they say a balanced chemical reaction. They say balanced. So therefore, I must balance it. There must be two of those and two of those. There you can see the two in front. And of course, I'm going to squeeze in the two electrons there. So that is my balanced half reaction. Okay. For the oxidation, why? Sodium standing. Okay. Sodium, later look at sodium again. Lost two electrons. So if I write it on the right hand side, it's a loss of electrons. Now they say, write down the name of the substance that is the reducing agent. Hey, reducing agent says again, reducing agent is a substance that is oxidized. So which one has been oxidized? Let's look again. The reducing agent here, therefore, is sodium. So I'm going to write down the name, please. Nothing else. I write down sodium. I'm going to write it smaller now because I'm running out of space here. So that is sodium. Identify the substance that undergoes oxidation. That means that sodium will still lose electrons. That is sodium when it is lost electrons already. So the substance that undergoes is will be sodium. Now they ask me for the next one. Write down a balanced e chemical equation for the reduction of reaction. So if this one has undergone oxidation, and that means the other one must undergo a reduction. I don't worry that side, this is the side that I'm always working with. So therefore, I can write chlorine before, and after the arrow is chlorine with a negative, but I have two here, so I must have two. Let me just double check. Yes, there's two chlorines and two sodiums. There I have it. Okay, so this is my reduction. But now, that means this one must have gained two electrons. That is true. Gained two electrons to become chloride ions. Okay, so the, this was the molecule here, yeah? the, the molecule, and the molecule gained some electrons, and then afterwards I had the ion which means it has a charge and it has a negative charge. It was a negative ion or an anion. Okay, so that exercise was not that bad. I've got three minutes to explain to you exactly what is, what is an oxidation number. You've come across it already. You know most of it already. But just to make it formal, let's get into oxidation numbers. Let's look, uh, look at our screen quickly. So we said the oxidation of reaction is for sodium, sodium there, and the sodium, when I look at it again, has lost electrons. And of course, my reduction of reaction is chlorine, which has gained two electrons on the left-hand side, and I get the chloride ions. That is for sure what I have. Now, what are oxidation numbers? Oxidation numbers are nothing but pretending that all of them are ions, are ionic ones. Okay, now you're going to say that is a strange definition because how do I get to it? But don't worry, I'll explain now in detail for you. Now, when an oxidation number increases, 
we call, in other words, if oxidation number went from minus three to minus two to minus one, then I call it oxidation for the red arrow. And if the oxidation number becomes from plus three to zero, for instance, it means I have reduction. In other words, if it comes down, I'm gaining electrons, reduction. If it goes up, if it goes up that way, if it goes up, then more positive direction, it means I'm losing electrons. And then we've given you some rules after this. We said to you, some rules, you know, I'm only gonna say two of them to you because I think the others uh, you can explore yourself. The first is, if something stands on its own without a sign, then the oxidation number is zero. It's a, in other words, the charge is zero. It's the same thing we said earlier on. Now, hydrogen, I know, has a, we know by now hydrogen is always plus one. It likes to lose one electron, except in certain cases. I'm not gonna go into those cases now. Now, and next we know that oxygen like to gain two electrons, and that's why we say oxygen is negative two, except when oxygens are in peroxides. That's important to know. So those are the most important ones I think I want to tell you today, because as you go on, you learn that there are other important ones. Now, lastly, I just want to tell you something about if you I will tell you about electronegative atoms, but that simply means those are atoms that like to gain electrons. And we say they are more electronegative. You've done this in grade 10, so I'm not gonna stand still there. And lastly, I just want to show you and tell you what we are doing in two weeks time. We are doing something very interesting. Or is it next week already? We're doing something very interesting. But let me just summarize for you quickly. One, please note that redox reactions are transfer of electrons. Number two, that you must know that oxidation numbers are nothing but charges, and we pretend that everything is ionic. Number three, if oxidation numbers go up, we call it oxidation. If the charges go down, we call it reduction. And lastly, you need to know that we can write half reactions like this. You've seen, I take one atom and I write what it looks like later. I take another atom and I tell you what it looks like later, and then we just add them up. And that is what our plan was today for. Now, lastly, next week, when we get together again Monday, we're going to look at electrostatics. So what I want to say to you is, Please go over that work again. It is important for now and for next year and even beyond high school. Everything of the best, grade 11, so I said at the beginning, is difficult. Work hard and we'll find it becomes easier. The more you practice, the more permanent it becomes. Good afternoon.